Did you know there are hundreds across the world who share the same traces of DNA and even the same ancestry line as you do? It is astonishing how completely different people with varying backgrounds can have the same ancestors. Thanks to technological advancements, we are now able to look through dozens of generations in the past and uncover parts of our family tree we were barely aware of. Now try picturing this. You are looking at your family tree and see that you are apparently related to 16 million other people in the world. Oh, and you found out you came from a line of conquerors. How would you feel? Well, in 2003, a chunk of the male population discovered that they had more brothers than they originally thought. Though they are not completely blood-related brothers, it still begs the question. How are 16 million people related to one another? Welcome to Intrigued Mind, and join us in figuring out how 1 in 200 men in the entire world are direct descendants of the Mongol ruler Genghis Khan. In 2003, an evolutionary geneticist from the UK named Chris Tyler Smith discovered 8% of the Asian male population shared nearly identical Y chromosome sequences. Through looking at the variations in their DNA, data suggested the lineage began around 1,000 years ago, and it was traced to Mongolia, specifically to Genghis Khan, who is presumed to have fathered over hundreds of children. Though, you may be wondering who Genghis Khan is. In the 13th to 14th century, the largest empire in the world was the Mongol Empire. In fact, it still remains as one of the world's largest empires in history, placing second to the British. The man who built this massive realm was named Temujin, also famously known as Genghis Khan, which translates to Universal Ruler. He acquired this title after unifying the Mongol tribes and proceeding to attack nearby countries such as Persia, Khwarezm Empire, now Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Iran, Afghanistan, Song China, and even Russia. The question, how were tribes successful in overcoming such huge countries? To learn more about it, click on the link to our video on the rise of the Mongols in the description box below. In short, the Mongol army was very quick on their feet and adapted a pillage and plunder tactic. They rode on horseback and used light artillery and arrows which could penetrate armor at close distances. They were reckoned to deal with at the time and had very few losses up their sleeve, making them one of the deadliest armies in history. Aside from leading a killer army, Genghis Khan introduced a writing system, enabling him to establish laws in Mongolia. The set of new rules eradicated the ways of their old culture such as selling and kidnapping women, enslaving Mongols, and dealing with harvest theft. He was such a powerful figure for centuries, but surprisingly, no one knew much about his personal life or even his appearance, which, in history, is odd for someone who was at the forefront of conquering almost half of the entire world. Apparently, he prohibited anyone to paint his portrait or even engrave his image on a coin. This explains why there were no accurate pictures, paintings, or sculptures that would immortalize how he looked during his reign. But if there were any images of him, it was done after he died. In fact, the only existing portrait of Genghis Khan preserved until today was painted half a century after his death. Despite these depictions, researchers said historical accounts of his looks were often unreliable, contradictory, and incomplete. Most descriptions would say he sported a long bushy beard and had long flowing hair. But a surprising account from a 14th century Persian chronicler named Rashid al-Din described Genghis Khan as a man with long red hair and green eyes. Even if his face continues to be a mystery, he remains as one of Asia's leaders who conquered twice as much land as any other person in history. However, his descendants couldn't even come close to his record. Yes, some of his descendants became conquerors on their own accord. Guess it runs in the family. 
But exactly how big is his family? Historians noted he had four sons and five daughters with his first wife, Porte, who gained the royal titles and acquired the majority of Concord lands after their father's death. Evidently, he had around five other wives and just barely 500 concubines, from areas spanning the Caspian Sea to the Pacific Ocean. This fact could explain how he fathered over a hundred other children as well, and how it led to his long list of descendants. Historians and researchers found political and biological reasons as to why he had so many children. The explanations could shed light on how his gene was traced to 0.5% of the male population today. As a warlord going off to conquer other countries, Genghis Khan gained a lot of power by slaughtering men in different countries. After his conquests, Mongols would be allowed to take advantage of the women left behind. The most beautiful ones were left for their leader to take as a concubine. And from his many affairs, he had sons and daughters with them. Some concubines were given noble ranks and were left to take care of the conquered land in his absence while he was off invading more land. In turn, his children were given power as well. It may have been partly due to pleasure, but it also served as a political move. All of his offspring across Eurasia would remain loyal to him, allowing his empire to continue existing in peace, even after his death. But scientists are still mystified by this. Even if he had many children, his genes should have been lost due to adaptation to a new environment since 800 years have passed. But what allowed his gene to survive all these centuries? Geneticists have hypothesized a genetic mutation in his family line, probably from his great-great-grandfather. The mutation was rapidly spread through Genghis Khan's conquests and concubines, kind of like a super Y chromosome lineage. What does a super Y chromosome lineage even mean? It does not point towards someone having superpowers, but it does have some relation to survival of the fittest. In a biological perspective originating from Darwin's theory of evolution, survival of the fittest meant organisms that have adjusted to their environment had the most success in surviving and reproducing offspring. In the case of Genghis Khan and his ancestors, their line had a genetic mutation which made it seem their male line had the capacity to survive. Surprisingly, it was not only Genghis Khan who had this Y chromosome. In 2015, geneticists Mark Jobling and Patricia Belarek traced lineages that have survived hundreds of years ago. One lineage is even centuries older than Genghis Khan's period. One was traced to the Ming Dynasty ruler named Giltanga. His lineage consisted of descendants who were the rulers of the Qing Dynasty which was the final imperial dynasty of China from the years 1644 to 1912. His Y chromosome is linked to over 1.5 million men across Asia. An even older lineage was linked to the 4th century Irish warlord and king named Nile of Nine Hostages. His descendants ruled the medieval Unil dynasty which dominated Northern Ireland between the 6th and 10th centuries. His gene is linked to over 3 million men at present. There is a recurring theme suggesting these Super Y clans are linked to high-ranking officials who have lived in the early centuries, a time where there was nomadic living and conquests were made across the land. It was a social advantage they had. They had many wives, and they made sure to take advantage of their privilege. It just so happens, out of the three, Genghis Khan was the one who created the second largest empire ever. Together with his descendants, Genghis Khan and his family's Y chromosome lineage was dispersed across Eurasia. In fact, even if the Mongol Empire was separated into smaller empires in the late 13th century, Many countries were still ruled by his male line descendants. Talk about power. But with great power comes great responsibility. According to scientists and geneticists, 
this super wide lineage of his may have some implications and drawbacks in terms of evolution of the human race. Usually, Y chromosome types are very rare and have a large range of variability among lineages. There is a scientific explanation for this. A 2015 Genome article written by Sarah Kaplan for the Washington Post quotes that having genetic diversity is beneficial for humans as it reduces the likelihood of passing unfavorable genetic traits which can weaken species over time. For Genghis Khan, his family's genetic mutation may have helped in maintaining the power of his empire and ultimately their survival as nomads. But from a genetic perspective, the mutation could affect the survival of humans. After all, it has been 800 years since his passing. Mutations are not all bad though. I mean, look at the X-Men. But kidding aside, mutant genes can sometimes give an edge to some humans, like becoming less susceptible to acquiring malaria or to even simply drink milk and eat cheese. You may even wonder if you have a genetic mutation of your own. But of course, not all mutations harbor special qualities. Some mutations allow geneticists to help us track down our lineage, with some family trees tracing back to over a thousand years ago. However, the Y chromosome can only tell us so much about our past. As we uncover more about the world, like once Genghis Khan's grave is found, history will continue to rewrite itself, and it can reveal more about how far his genes go. But that topic is for another video. Anyways, it doesn't hurt to ask yourself if you have your own link to some historical legend. Let us know in the comments below if you have any relation to someone in your history books. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments.